This is a coal-in-place asphalt recycling project for West Virginia Department of Highways. It's State Route 119. This is a late October project. Uh, the project is cold in place asphalt recycling using an emulsified engineered asphalt and a Portland cement as a, an, an added additive uh, to help with the set time and the cure time. The cement is added at five pounds per square yard and the asphalt emulsion is at 1.8 gallons per square yard. The operation involved here the asphalt application truck augers the cement to the rear of the truck the augers at the rear of the truck then lay the prescribed amount of cement uh, dry to the surface of the roadway. We use a skirting that goes down to within three inches of the surface of the road and this helps contain the, uh, any dust that might get airborne and keeps it um, close to the ground or it stops it completely. Sometimes on a breezy day, some dust does get airborne and uh, that is a concern. Cement is laid about 200 feet in front of the train itself. The roadway conditions are, there are a lot of potholes, a lot of patching, a lot of cracks. There have been some slides where the roadway has moved uh, and has um, got to a point where they've had to stabilize the road itself as it slips towards the uh, edge and the shoulders uh, where the roads are elevated, uh, you know, 50 feet or more. New drainage has been, uh, drainage has been improved. New catch basins are placed. Uh, the cross pipes are all new and be placed. In West Virginia, the specification calls for a concrete uh, surface placed on top of the cross pipes. The CIR operation is cutting through these at five inches in depth, which is the same depth called out for for the cold in place recycling of the roadway. The milling machine and the train consists of an emulsified asphalt tanker. Uh, it's operated by remote control by the steering platform and the operator on top of the milling machine. The tanker has its own pump. The pumping system can offload a truck that uh, is delivering emulsion uh, that it does not have a pump. It also has its own heating system. If a product arrives and is not the needed temperature, then it can be heated to the required temperature that it would then flow through the flow meters and pumps and into the cutting machine. The tanker has two main hoses. One goes into the flow meter. The other one is the return under the tanker of any material that is left up and what the type of process is allowing to go to the cutting table. The cutting table is the 11-foot wide truck. The On this project, 
because a new cross boat and a new crowd being developed for this roadway at 2% means that there's excess material. As the operation moves forward, when the pavement becomes unmanageable with excess material, simply pull a truck in place and offload the excess material into the truck. Once the paver that is continuing to move forward with the mill operation is at a manageable level, the conveyor is simply moved back into its position over the paver. The actual emulsion is then set in place and the microprocess is turned back on and the recycling operation continues. operation. The third bin is placed in the hopper of the paver. This helps stop segregation that might occur in the milling process. This is, a, this is a track paver. There's a 40 foot no contact averaging ski set up alongside the paver. Uh, controlled with sonics like the uh, operation of the mill. We've got our four sonic, two, one at each end, and two centered uh, at a certain distance apart in the center of the paper. The material is then placed. <coughs> New cross slope, so we're checking longitudinally for uh, level, and also our cross slope, uh, which we're aiming for, is two percent. Compaction effort. There is a dual drum vibratory roller. That is our first roller. Normal, um, normally he would do a static pass a vibratory pass, and then a number of static passes over. These would all be under the control of a nuclear gauge operator who's checking for density. A rolling pattern at the beginning of the job will be set up, and then that rolling pattern will be continued. After the steel drum roller has finished and has got to where he needs to be with the nuclear gauge and the density, then it returns to a pneumatic tied roller. We use a 22 and a half ton pneumatic tied roller. That will then come in at four miles an hour. He will roll the entire mat at four miles an hour. And then we have a finished roller, a 10 ton finished roller that follows up behind the pneumatic and takes out any imperfections that the tires of the pneumatic may place in the mat. On this particular project, we are also placing, after the final roll and density is met, we're then placing a prime coat on the surface of the road. The prime coat comprises of a emulsified asphalt, a CSS 1H, diluted 50% with water. Gradation of this material is one and a half inch minus. 
It's a nice homogeneous mix. As you can see, there are many potholes on the roadway. There are a lot of cracking. There's a lot of corrugation. But once the operation, once the recycling has gone through these areas, those cracks are eradicated, so they can't come back. Some of the fines in the wearing surface that is placed have also uh, diminished from this uh, old asphalt product, the wearing surface. The roadway was due for being refurbished. Um, at the cost of this particular project, I'm told by the Department of Highways that the equivalent for the, for the amount of money that they spent to do a five inch recycled base, place an inch and a half wearing surface on top. What they would have got for the same price would have been a mill and fill of two inches and that would be practically about what, the, what they would get in return for the same cost of the five inches of recycle and the inch and a half wearing surface they're placing on top. On this particular road there are a lot of super elevations and this is where we would then uh, diminish the crown, maintain the super elevation of what it was uh, originally and so we would get quite a bit of excess material out of here um, just trying to get that back to shape because the roadway will receive an inch and a half wearing surface and that will raise the grade uh, so we must maintain the original grade on these supers the nuclear gauge operator is working with the pneumatic tired roller should he get to an area where he's not getting density, then we would call back the steel drum roller and um, we would uh, re-roll re re that area until we reach the required density. Yeah, just set up. I'm videotaped. No, get on it. So once the nuclear gauge operator has everything set up, he'll do his testing. And then depending on what readings he gets, we will then have the pneumatic tide roller come up and complete the rolling here. Or we may have to bring the steel drum roller back. I'm going to wait for his results, and then he's going to tell me what he finds. <laughs> if it's smiling, it's got to be good. I'm still waiting for it to get
Now you're using direct, right? Not um, not backscatter. No. no. Direct transmission. Di direct transmission. Yep. And you are at ninety-eight percent compaction. Okay, we're at ninety-eight percent compaction, which is good. And the pneumatic tire roller is just coming into view. In this case, we're using a 22 and a half ton Dynapack nine wheel pneumatic tire roller. The operator will operate it at four miles an hour, no greater. And he will move it, he will do four passes, two up and two back to make sure that we get every inch of the roadway covered. Any imperfections that may be put in through the pneumatic, uh, if it meets uh, an area that might have been bridged by the steel drum, and he puts any kind of a wheel mark in that particular area, then the um, third roller, which is a 10-ton um, steel drum vibratory roller, in the static mode, will then come up and roll those areas and uh, get those back to a smooth mat ready for paving. The final application that this process takes is a prime coat at about zero, at about 0 0.15 gallons per square yard. It's a 50-50 blend of the emulsified asphalt, the CSS1H, and water.